Hello, my name is Danny Higgins. I'm with Pure Storage. I'm the database architect for the APJ region. Today, we're going to be talking about cloning. Uh, no, we're not going to be talking about cloning sheep. We're going to be talking about cloning databases. More specifically, how we can clone an Oracle database and do this very quickly by leveraging the Pure Storage Flash Array snapshot capability. So, why is cloning databases important? Well, Invariably, if you're running your production databases, you're going to have developers who are writing new code, and you're going to need to get a copy of that production database into their hands so they can develop against it, and then test against it, and then get that new functionality they've developed back into the production database. So we need to be able to move data around, and we need to be able to move it around quickly. Uh, lots of companies today are embracing some of the more modern development techniques, for example, agile development, or DevOps style uh, ways of doing this. And this is really all about automation. How can we get the capability into our developers' hands so that they can provision environments quickly and get on with their job of developing uh, business functionality? Um, a lot of these projects uh, and where people are trying to embrace these techniques are failing. Uh, they're either running over budgets or they're behind schedule. And when we look at the reasons why that's the case, in 85% of the time, it's the fact that they can't move the data around quickly enough. Although they might be able to spin up a dev environment, uh, whether it's virtualized or, or and use some form of scripting or automation to do that quickly, if we have to move large quantities of data around, that's still a very slow process. And let's just have a look at this uh, to kind of illustrate this. Let's assume we have a one terabyte database, which we can see down here in the uh, bottom left of the screen. Let's pretend this is our production database, and we want to get a copy of this production database uh, to a developer on a development environment. So the conventional process would go something like this. First step is we're going to take an ARM and backup of that database. And what this would involve is reading the entire contents of this one terabyte database and all of that I.O. is going over our Sun Fabric into our database host, only for us to write all of those database blocks down into the form of a backup file. Once we have the backup file, we're going to do the same process again. We're going to read the entire contents of that backup file back through the SAN into the DB host, and then we're going to write this down into a duplicate database. And this duplicate database is now something we could hand over to our developer. If we take a step back and look at the process we've just been through to get there, though, this is really quite inefficient. We've had to read a terabyte, write a terabyte down, read that terabyte again, and write it down again. So that's four terabytes of I.O. we've sent through our SAN and compute layer. If we look at what's held on the storage, essentially we've got three one terabyte copies of the same thing. So that's three terabytes of capacity. And if we look at the speed for us to get from point A to, to point B to actually hand over this copy of the database, even for a one terabyte database, this is going to take several hours. And as that database grows and we start dealing with larger databases, a five or a ten terabyte database, this process could take a whole day. So this is really um, consuming uh, DBA's time uh, and it's uh, not the most efficient use of their time. So let's have a look at how we can do this and optimize this process using the pure storage snapshots. So we're going to do the same thing again. Um, the first thing to notice is this one terabyte database, thanks to the pure flash arrays data reduction, typically we see about three to one reduction on Oracle databases. So we'd be storing less than 400 gigabytes to begin with. Now, when we want to take a copy of this database, when we use the snapshot technology, we don't actually have to move the data anywhere. What we're doing here is manipulating metadata and we're setting up a snapshot, which we can then turn into a read, write, clone. And that initially consumes no space because we've not moved the data anywhere. That clone is just referring back to the original uh, blocks, which now become shared blocks of that original source database. And if you were to imagine scaling this process up to 10 developers, for example, let's assume 10 developers, they each want a full-size copy of this one terabyte database. Well, if we're using the conventional method with RMAN, we actually have to store 10 
full size copies, so that's going to be 10 terabytes of additional storage required. Using the snapshot method, that's not the case. The snapshot initially consumes no space. I can create 10 snapshots and, uh, you know, in 10 clones, and I'm initially going to consume no space. I'm only going to start consuming space as the blocks change between the source and the clone, and I start tracking those blocks. So very, very sp uh, space efficient. If we look at you know the uh, the picture in terms of data movement, we've moved no I/O through the sun layer, so we've not had any impact on our database host. Um, we mentioned before about the data reduction. Even with one copy of this database, this is seven times more efficient than doing this through Arman. And as we have multiple copies of the database, that gets even more efficient in terms of space consumption. And then we look at the amount of time it takes to complete this process. And we're going to show you a demo of this in a moment, but we, we can do an end-to-end -end clone of the database in just a few minutes. So this is thousands of times more efficient, and, and this time is not dictated by the size of the database. If this database grows to a 10 terabyte database, I can clone it just as quickly as I can clone a 1 terabyte database, which is very unlike Arman. So one of the other questions is, if I'm a DBA and I want to use these snapshots, then don't I have to get my storage admin to do this for me? Isn't this going to slow down the process so it's no longer an automated process? Well, the answer is no, because there's a REST API built into the array, and that allows you to make the calls to the array to take the snapshots and to clone them and to move them around from whatever development language you want to use or however you want to script it, whether that's a Java program, whether you're writing in Python, or even in a SSH script, which is what we'll use in this demo. So let's take a look at the demo. Uh, in this demo, we've got a single pure storage array, which is running both our production and development environments. And we're going to show you how we're going to refresh that development environment. So let's take a look at the environment itself. Uh, we've got two hosts here. Uh, the first host in the top left corner of the screen is called Aura1. That's running the source database, which in our example here is going to be our production database. And on the Aura2 host, that's running the target database. And that's going to be, uh, for, for this uh, scenario, that's going to be our development environment. And what we're going to do is we're going to take that source database and we're going to take a snapshot of it. And we're going to use that snapshot to refresh the target database. So you can imagine this as a situation where the developer picks up a phone, contacts his DBA, and says, hey, I need a fresh copy of the production database in, in my environment. So let's step through the process we're going to do to, to actually do the cloning. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to log on to the source database and we're going to run some SQL transactions against that source database just to add a bit more data in there so we've got something to clone. Now this source database is about 650 gigs to begin with. We're going to add a few more tables and a bit more data in there. Uh, so let's log on to the Aura1 machine so we can do that. So here we are, we're logged on to Aura1 machine as the Oracle user. I've got a script which is going to do this for us, so I'm just going to start this script. And what we can see here is it's just creating a big file table space, and it's going to create uh, a table, and it's going to load that table with some randomized data. So we'll allow this, the script to run, and we can see that table has been created. We're using the randomize function down here just to create a bunch of random data to put into the table. And then what we're going to do is we're going to insert a user-defined row of text into the table just so we can make sure it makes it over to the target DB after we've done the cloning operation. So let's just give this a moment to complete loading the data. Okay, so if we look at what's happened here, we've created this new table, it's loaded 22 megabytes of extra data, and now we're going to put in a row of our own data just so we can identify this on the target DB. So let's just put in uh, clone oracle demo, and this has put this row of text in here with a timestamp. Uh, so we're, we're finished now on the Aura 1. And what we're going to do now is we're going to 
log on to the Aura 2 machine, and this is where we're going to drive the cloning operation from. So what I also want to do is the script I'm going to run on the Aura 2 machine is going to make a call to the flash array and it's going to take the snapshot which we're going to use to do the refresh of that Aura 2 environment. Now just to prove to you that we don't need to do anything special on the source DB in terms of shutting that database down or switching it into a backup mode, what I'm going to do is run a swing bench workload against that source database before and during the period we take the snapshot just so we can show that there's a whole bunch of transactions going on. So I've got uh, a configuration set up here, um, which is source DB. So if I open this configuration, you can see that the connect string for this swing bench workload is connecting to my R1 machine. It's using the source DB service name to, to connect into this database. So let's hit the play button and we can see that it's now started to generate this workload. So we're currently doing uh, you know, a few hundred transactions a second, and we're gonna leave this running while we do the cloning operation, just so there's a workload in flight as we take the snapshot. So let's log on to the Aura 2 environment and do the work. So again, I've logged into the Aura 2 host, I'm in again as the Oracle user, and I have a script which is pre-prepared in here which is going to do the work. And let's just have a little look at this script so we can see what's involved. This is the script which is going to do the entire clone of this, this whole database. And what we can see on the screen here is the full script. So this is 84 lines of code. Most of this code is actually comments writing out to the to the screen what's going on as we go through each step. There's probably about 10 lines of meaningful code in here which are doing the work. So this kind of stuff is really simple to write. So let's uh, have a look at that script. And here it is. So I'm already set up on this box where I've got my environment variables already set up so it's uh, pointing against the target database. So I'm simply going to run the script and it's going to step through the whole process. So the first thing the script is doing, we're making SSH calls here. So if we go and take a look at the script again, what we're about to do is make this SSH call and we're giving it the IP address of the flash array and we're going to log on to the flash array as the pure user then we're just embedding the CLI command to take the snapshot inside of that SSH call. And that's exactly what we see here. So if we look at what we're doing, we're saying pure vol snap. We're giving the snap a, uh, a name. In this case, we're calling it a refresh. And now we're providing a list of uh, pure storage volumes or LUNs that we want to take the snapshot off. So I'm just going to press return and we can see that this is an instant operation. We've taken a snapshot of two LUNs here. They're both one terabyte in size. That was an instant operation. So if we go back to the PowerPoint slides, what we've actually done is take this snapshot and we've taken the snapshot of these two volumes and we can see here that this has consumed no space initially. Now, now that we've got the snapshot, what we need to do is use these snapshots and use them to overwrite the equivalent volumes on the target environment. Now, to do this cleanly, we want to make sure that these volumes are in no way receiving any I.O. Now, to make these volumes uh, clean in terms of usage, we need to shut down the database and we need to shut down the ASM disk groups so that these, these volumes are no longer active and once they're in a state where nobody's accessing those volumes, we can then use the snapshot to overwrite. So we're going to shut down that target database. And once it's down, we're going to use the ASM command to shut down the, the, the two uh, ASM disk groups that we're going to be overwriting. And they're going to come down. So we'll go back to the script and we'll step through this. So we're about to shut down the target database. So that's now shut down. We're now going to shut down the ASM disk groups, and those are both down. Now, 
we're making another call to the array and we're using the pure vol copy command, copy command, sorry, and we're using the overwrite switch and we're telling it to use the snapshots we've taken to overwrite those target volumes. So this is all very simple scripting. So let's just see how quickly this runs. And again, it's an almost instant operation. We've moved two terabytes of data and use that to overwrite those target LUNs. And that was an instant operation because we're not actually copying the data. We're just manipulating the, the metadata maps to um, refer back to those snapshot images. So this was the process we've just been through. And now we've done that, we're ready and we can bring the environment back up. So we're going to start by restarting those ASM disk groups. And once those ASM disk groups are back up, we can then restart our database. Now, you may have noticed the target database has now changed its name. And what's happened, we've taken the control file from the source and overwritten it over here. So it's taken on the identity of the source database. So if we had connected apps into this database running an Aura 2, we need to rename that database back to its original name so those apps can reconnect. And we're going to do a very simple technique to do this. So ASM disk groups are now back up. We're now going to start that source uh, uh, target database. And the technique we're going to use to rename it back to its original name is very simple. We're just going to use the alter system command and just give it a unique name back to its original target DB name. Now this, of course, involves a shutdown of that database and a restart, so it picks up the same name. So what we're doing now is shutting that database down. We've now done the rename, and we can bring this thing back up. So that database has been restarted. And remember, earlier on, we put a row of our own data in there. We're now going to check that that row of data exists on the target. And there it is. So we've finished cloning that database, and we've done this in roughly, uh, I think, about two minutes. Uh, if you think about doing this for a you know, 650 gigabyte database, doing this with Arman, this is going to be at least a couple of hours' work. So this is really the power of these snapshots and how being able to do this so quickly and being able to script this can really help those agile development or DevOps type initiatives you might be working on to succeed and be able to move this data around quickly. So that was Oracle Database Cloning using the pure snapshots. Uh, I think we demoed there how we can do this very quickly, just a few minutes to clone that database no matter what size. We didn't need to shut down the source database or even switch it in any, into any special backup mode. And huge savings on space consumption here. We can take as many of these copies as we like, knowing we're not going to pay for the storage to support them. So stay tuned. Um, in the next demo, we're going to be talking about how we can use these snapshots to deliver a DR setup whereby we can automatically fail over our database to a DR site and then fail it back to the production site. Thank you for listening.